Chapter 1, Section 3, Studying Life. Deep in the skull of a British teenager, an invisible invader eats away at brain tissue until it resembles a sponge. In a Costa Rican rainforest, a chameleon crawls past the bright red tree frog whose blue legs look like a pair of blue jeans, while a toucan uses its rainbow-colored bill to slice into a wild avocado. These scenes all involve biology, the study of life. The Greek word bios means life and logi means study of. Biology is the science that employs the scientific method to study living things. The scientific study of life has never been more exciting than it is today. Why? Think about headline news stories you may have heard about over the last couple years, and even over the last couple of days. Hantavirus crops up in southwestern states. Dengue fever threatens the Gulf Coast. Mice, sheep, and even dogs have been cloned. Genetically engineered crops plants are designed to resist insect pests. The stories behind these and many other headlines come from the study of living things. Characteristics of living things Are the firefly and the fire in figure 1-14 alive? They are both giving off energy. Describing what makes something alive is not easy. No single characteristic is enough to describe a living thing. Also, some non-living things share one or more traits with living things. Mechanical toys, automobiles, and clouds move around, for example, whereas mushrooms and trees live their lives in one spot. Other things, such as viruses, exist at the border between organisms and non-living things. Despite these difficulties, it is possible to describe what most living things have in common. Living things share the following characteristics. Living things are made up of units called cells. Living things reproduce. Living things are based on a universal genetic code. Living things grow and develop. Living things obtain and use materials and energy. Living things respond to their environment. Living things maintain a stable internal environment. Taken as a group, living things change over time. Big Ideas in Biology the units in this book seem to cover different subjects, but we'll let you in on a secret. That's not how biology works. All biological sciences are tied together by themes and methods of study that cut across disciplines. Some of these big ideas may sound familiar because they overlap with the characteristics of life or the nature of science. You will see that these big ideas themselves overlap and interlock with one another. All of them crop up again and again in the chapters that follow. Science as a way of knowing. Science is not a list of facts, but a way of knowing. The job of science is to use observations, questions, and experiments to explain the natural world in terms of natural forces and events. Successful scientific research reveals rules and patterns that can explain and predict at least some events in nature. Science, therefore, enables us to take action that affect events in the world around us, making certain that scientific knowledge is used for the benefit of society requires an understanding of the nature of science, its strengths, its limitations, and its interaction with our culture. Interdependence in nature 
All forms of life on earth are connected together into a biosphere, which literally means living planet. Within the biosphere, organisms are linked to one another and to the land, water, and air around them. The relationships between organisms and their environment depends on two processes, the flow of energy and the cycling of matter. Human life and the economies of human societies also require matter and energy, so human life depends directly on the economy of nature. Matter and Energy Life's most basic requirements are matter that serves as nutrients to build body structures and energy to fuel the processes of life. Some organisms, such as plants, obtain energy from sunlight and take up the nutrients they need from air, water, and soil. Other organisms, including most animals, must eat plants or other animals to obtain both nutrients and energy. These requirements are the basis of the interdependence of all living things in the biosphere. Cellular Basis of Life Organisms are composed of one or more cells which are the smallest units that can be considered fully alive. Cells can grow, respond to their surroundings, and reproduce. Despite their small size, cells are complex and highly organized. Many living things consist of only a single cell and are called unicellular. The organisms you are most familiar with, for example, animals and plants, are multicellular. The cells in multicellular organisms are often remarkably diverse, existing in a variety of sizes and shapes. In some multicellular organisms, each type of cell is specialized to perform a different function. The human body, for example, contains at least 85 different cell types. Information and Heredity Life's processes are directed by information carried in a genetic code that is common, with minor variations to every organism on Earth. That information, carried in DNA, is copied and passed from parent to offspring. The information coded in DNA forms an unbroken chain that stretches back roughly three and a half billion years. Yet, the DNA inside your cells right now can influence your risk of getting cancer, the amount of cholesterol in your body, and the color of your child or your children's hair. Units and Diversity of Life the remarkable thing about the living world is that all living things are fundamentally alike at the molecular level. Even though life takes an almost unbelievable variety of forms, all organisms are composed of a common set of carbon-based molecules, all use proteins to build their structures and carry out their functions, and all store information in a common genetic code. One great contribution of evolutionary theory is that it explains both this unity of life and its diversity. Evolution In biology, evolution or changes in living things through time explains the inherited similarities as well as the diversity of life. Evolution is the unifying theme of biology. Evolutionary theory tells us that all forms of life on earth are related because we all trace our ancestry back to a common origin more than 3.5 billion years ago. Evidence of this shared history is found in all aspects of living and fossil organisms. 
from physical features to structures of proteins to sequences of biological information found in DNA and RNA. Structure and Function The structure of wings enable birds and insects to fly. The structure of legs enable horses to gallop and kangaroos to hop. When organisms need to do anything, from capturing food to digesting it, and from reproducing to breathing, they use some kind of structure that has evolved in ways that make a particular function possible. Each major group of organisms has evolved its own particular body part or toolkit that it evolves into different forms as various species adapt to the challenges of life in a wide range of environments. Homeostasis All living things expend energy to keep conditions inside their cells within certain limits. An organism's ability to maintain a tolerable internal environment in the face of changing external condition is vital to its survival. Any breakdown of that stability may have serious or even fatal consequences. The robin shown in figure 1-18 is maintaining homeostasis by puffing up its feathers to stay warm. Science, Technology, and Society Science seeks to provide useful information, but many discoveries raise ethical questions. Just because we can use scientific information in a particular way, should we do so? How should we use genetic engineering? Should cloning of humans be banned? Should cloning of any animals and plants be prohibited? How can we use our growing understanding of how human activity affects our world? Should we take action to stop global warming? What's the best way to protect our food and water supplies? In our democracy, these questions can only be answered by a public that truly understands what science is and how it works. Branches of Biology Living things come in an astonishing variety of shapes, sizes, and habits. Living systems also range in a size from groups of molecules that make up structures inside cells to collections of organisms that make up the biosphere. No single biologist could study all this diversity, so biology is divided into different fields. Some fields are based on the types of organisms being studied. Zoologists study animals. Botanists study plants. Other fields of study life from, from a particular perspective. For example, paleontologists study ancient life. Some fields focus on study of living systems at different levels of organization, as shown in figure 1-19. Some of the levels at which life can be studied include molecules, cells, organisms, populations of a single kind of organism, communities of different organisms in an area, and the biosphere. At all these levels, smaller living systems are found within larger systems. Molecular biologists and cell biologists study some of the smallest living systems. Population biologists and ecologists study some of the largest systems in nature. Studies of all of these levels make important contributions to the quality, quality of human life. Biology in everyday life. As you begin studying biology, you may think of it as just another course with a textbook to read plus labs, homework, and tests. It's also science course, so you may worry that it will be too difficult. But you will see that more than any other area of study, biology touches your life every day. In fact, it's hard to think of anything 
you do that isn't affected by it. It helps you understand and appreciate every other form of life, from pets such as the dogs in figure 1-2 to dinosaurs no longer present on Earth. It provides information about the food you need and the methods for sustaining the world's food supplies. It describes the conditions of good health and the behaviors and diseases that can harm you. It is used to diagnose and treat medical problems. It identifies environmental factors that might threaten you, such as disposal of waste from human activities. More than any other science, biology helps you understand what affects the quality of your life. Biologists do not make the decisions about most matters affecting human society or the natural world. Citizens and governments do. In just a few years, you will be able to exercise the rights of a voting citizen, influencing public policy by the ballots you cast and the messages you send to public officials. With others, you will make decisions based on many factors, including customs, values, ethical standards, and scientific knowledge. Biology can provide decision makers with useful information and analytical skills. It can help them envision the possible effects of their decisions. Bi biology can help people understand that humans are capable of of predicting and trying to control their future and that of our planet.